Today we're going to be talking about the hidden reason for your headaches, migraines and ultimately your cognitive decline. If you're feeling bouts of lack of concentration, lack of focus, lack of attention, pains in the head, pressure in the head, migraines, if you're feeling um, low mood and mood imbalances, if you're feeling vertigo and lack of balance and coordination, poor vision, blocked sinuses, essentially any, any symptoms you have regarding this part of your body, the head, this video applies to you. And watch along to find out the secret cause or possible cause for those issues. A lot of the times most people are speaking about liver, the GI tract or mineral deficiencies like you know low magnesium can cause some of these things but there is an element that not many people speak about that could be the secret hidden key for why you're experiencing these issues and this is largely due to the fact that this well, it's secret but this element isn't discussed amongst the mainstream sort of medical allopathic paradigm and this is what we've discussed on this channel many times the lymphatic system so not many people know how the lymphatic system works, but essentially that's the body's purification system. That's the system designed by the body to deal with the waste side of chemistry. So when all of our trillions of cells are doing their daily duties, they give off met metabolic waste. That metabolic waste goes into the lymphatic system, which is your body's purification system, your body's waste disposal system, and your lymphatic system's job is to take that out of the intracellular spaces, go into the lymphatic nodes to be broken down, retrieve anything that they can possibly can, and the, the byproduct of that is pure waste that needs to be ex exuded or removed from the body. So that is the important, important role of the lymphatic system. And we all know that the lymphatic system runs throughout the entire body. It runs from the toes all the way up to the head area. In recent times, there is the discovery of the glymphatic system. This is the, the brain's own lymphatic system. So the brain itself has a waste disposal system. That makes sense because look how much people are so preoccupied in the mind, in the thought realm, in the head area. A lot of people's attention is just here. It makes sense that there's so much metabolic activity going on in the head that it must have a system designed to remove waste materials, correct, right? So every cell has to metabolize and has to produce waste. So we're only now recently discovering that the brain itself has a waste disposal system called the glymphatic system. Now, the way the lymphatic system actually works is we have these lymphatic vessels, these one-way check valves that go from the toes all the way up towards the, the, the thoracic duct, so this middle sort of chunk here in the, in the body, up through the neck, in the head, back down through the neck and into the bowels and into the rest of the body. So kind of like recirculated back into the blood. Now, this paints a very, very important point, okay? We have 700 different lymph clusters and nodes. Remember I told you that the lymph's job is to take all of that cellular waste from the intracellular spaces and then go to the lymphatic nodes and clusters for it to be further broken down? Well, we have seven, around about 700 of these lymphatic clusters and nodes around the body. And these are these contain sort of you know lymphocytes, macrophages, bacteria, um, you know T cells, immune cells that help break down any of those waste particulates into smaller components for it to be ex eliminated from the body. There's also different roles where it kind of extracts any sort of minerals or anything that the body deems useful out of those sort of um, metabolic products, or byproducts. So we have 700 of them around the body, and a third of them one third of them sit around the neck region. Can you imagine that? So a third of those 700 sit around the jaw, the lower jaw, the face, the cheekbones, the neck, the, the front neck, the back neck, just the base of the skull, the clavicles, the upper chest, the upper back, the shoulders. This region is extremely important. This is where a lot of activity is happening in terms of lymphatic breakdown of waste. So if the lymphatic vessels go with one-way check valves, go all the way from the bottom or the lower extremities, from the toes and the, the calves, all the way up to through the thoracic duct and into this area, 
then it's very important that this area is working efficiently and there's not any sort of blockages or any stagnation or constipation of this area, right? We need to ensure that the lymphatics is flowing nicely around this area. Why is that? Why is it important? Well, it, just based on the anatomy of the human body, there is clearly this bottleneck situation, right? So much of this lymphatic fluid is being sort of drained in this area that if there is blockages, what we've got then is a bottleneck situation. If the lymph clusters and lymph nodes are, are overburdened, there's too many toxins within the system, that the lymphatic fluids actually become very stagnant around this area, well, that's very, very clear that the area, the lymphatic system, the area of the head, the lymph in the head cannot effectively drain back down, right? So if this area is all stagnant, there's too many toxins, the lymph becomes hard, lymphatic constipation ensues, then the head can't effectively drain its lymph. This is what we call lymphatic pressure. This is lymphatic pressure in the head. So if the lymphatics can't drain, then what we've got is this, is this sort of stagnation of lymphatics. And remember, the lymphatics deals with the acid side of chemistry or the waste side of chemistry. So if, if the lymphatics deals with the waste side of chemistry and there is this bottleneck situation where the lymphatics is not flowing properly down through this region, then this lymphatic pressure ensues and because it's dealing with the acid waste side of chemistry, what we're gonna get eventually is a change in environment within the head area. So directly, so there's two things we wanna consider here. We wanna consider the direct result of lymphatic buildup or pressure in the head. So for anyone out there with pressure behind the eyes, pressure in the skull, feeling like the head is full of water, hair loss even, this is gonna be that that feeling of the pressure buildup, the lymphatic pressure buildup, because this area here is not, is not being able to filter it, right? The second thing is, because it's dealing with the waste side of chemistry, it's dealing with the acids mainly, what we're gonna get is through this buildup, through this stagnation, is we're gonna get a change of pH within this area. So this area is gonna start, start slowly becoming very acidic, and it's gonna backfire, on us because these toxins start to sort of fester. The minerals get hard and there is, a, there is this sort of coagulatory process around this area which changes the pH, changes the environment of the cell and ultimately we start to get de degeneration of this, 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 this part of the body. That's when we're gonna start seeing the skin conditions, where we're gonna start seeing many skin flare-ups acne, you know, psoriasis around this area, we're gonna start seeing vision problems, cataracts, floaters, we're gonna start seeing sinus blockages, right? So that's gonna be one of the first signs is like your sinuses are just so full, right? That's a clear indicator that this fluid is sort of stuck there, it's stagnant and it needs to come out. We're gonna get hair loss because the hair follicles are actually gonna become damaged due to the buildup of subcutaneous lymphatics within the head. We're gonna get hearing problems and hearing loss. We're gonna get gum and teeth issues and all sorts of distortion within the mouth. It can even get to a point where actually it affects the jaw. And now the jaw is becoming very displaced and uncomfortable. And then we're gonna get lower neck. We're gonna get neck problems, right? We're gonna get hardened lymph nodes behind the neck. We're gonna get you know, sort of throat issues. We're gonna get shoulder issues. We're gonna get, you know, issues around this area because of that stagnation. So this is called lymphatic pressure. And what you essentially want to do is even if you do not believe this is the cause, even if you don't, if you're just trying to find a, a way to improve your situation, this is some things, some, th this understanding is so useful because you can practice certain principles that help you eliminate this waste very easily. Right? It doesn't take up much time. So essentially what you want to be doing is ensuring the effective drainage of this lymphatic fluid. Now, we could then do a video on how to drain the lymph because in one aspect, it's difficult to just drain this area. However, if you apply some of these principles, this is gonna help regardless because when you drain the lymphatics, you wanna make sure that your lymph channels are open because otherwise you're just moving the lymph to other areas, circulating toxins, 
around and that's just going to cause further issues however for the most part you can just start working on draining this right so you've got simple things as such as you know um tapping in the morning so it's like light stimulation of the lymphatics so every morning or throughout the day what you're going to do is you're going to tap certain points around this area of the body you've got some in the jaw here back of the jaw you've got some at the neck you've got some around the, the clavicles, you've got some on the shoulders, you've got some where the thyroid is, and you're gonna to wanna to tap all of these areas every morning. This tapping technique is amazing for moving the lymphatics. What else have you got? You're also going to want to apply hot and cold therapy here behind the, you know, the sort of the back of the neck, the upper part, upper part of the back neck, or just the base of the skull. You do hot and cold packs around here where you get a cold ice pack and you put it there for seven minutes and then you alternate that with a hot pack for seven minutes and you do this about three times each but you're always going to end on the cold pack. So this sort of hot and cold therapy stimulates circulation, not only blood circulation but lymphatic circulation, right? And then we've got lymphatic massages. You can do these yourself where you can do them with your hand which is sort of like this light sort of rubbing technique i recommend just youtubing like how to do self lymphatic massages around the neck and you're going to see tons of useful videos of how to do that and essentially what these massages are it's not deep tissue massages it's light stimulation so it's mainly going to be this sort of like rubbing technique and just sort of light circular motions you can get even like a toothbrush and do it because this this light stimulation and this light rubbing it creates this sort of piezoelectricity which is an amazing lymphatic mover okay so we've got the lymphatic massages we've got the hot and cold therapy we've got in general just the the tapping in the morning which you can follow i think his name is dr perry from stop chasing pain um he has amazing videos on lymphatic system um, he is on Instagram, he also has his own program, so I definitely recommend checking him out to start moving the lymphatics around this area. You also have sinus drainage techniques, so these can be sort of herbal inhalants that you do, where you can get certain herbal blends with like lobelia, moulin leaf, fenugreek. You make some tea with that, you put your head over it with a hot towel, and you breathe in that hot steam, and it's going to open up the sinuses because these herbs are great expectorants. You've got nasal irrigation, um, you've got all kinds of sinus drainage techniques that you can use. Ear candling at some point can be quite good. Draining, you know, opening up the pathways to allow any of that sort of excess buildup of toxins via mucus to come out of the body. And in general, it's going to be exercise and things like rebounding is a great exercise, like jumping on a trampoline every day for 10 to 15 minutes is going to be amazing for this deep lymphatic movement within the body. Diaphragmatic breathing, deep breathing exercises is gonna open up this area and actually it's gonna open up these pockets of, of, of trapped toxins and allow them to be, to be eliminated throughout the body. Deep diaphragmatic breathing will be one of the, if not the most important exercise that you do that I encourage you to incorporate every day of your life because that's the number one way the lymphatics move because it creates this suction and this, this sort of vacuum inside of the body that propels the lymphatics to move. And it's great for your diaphragm, it's great for your lungs, it's great for oxygenation of the body, it's great for opening up and releasing certain fascia. It's also great for propelling lymphatics to move. All of these things are gonna be amazing to start draining this area. And I guarantee if you start applying these principles, you're going to start seeing results within at least 30 to, to 60 days. So definitely try this out and it might be an element that you have missed. So I hope this video has been valuable for you. So you can go ahead and start looking into that even further. I'm not just taking my word for it. Um, but yeah, I hope this video has been great. And if you like these videos, I want to see videos like this more often. Please drop a comment. Please drop a like, subscribe to my YouTube channel, and I will see you in the next video. Peace.